Open your Bibles this morning, if you would please, to the book of Matthew. Matthew and chapter number 8. Matthew and chapter number 8. Oh, it was some time back as I was reading through Scripture one day, I ran across this, uh, uh, this text. And even though it's a very familiar text that maybe in other of the gospel accounts it's a little bit expanded, much broader than what we find it here in Matthew, I did notice one, uh, one thing that sort of caught my attention and that's really the springboard that we're going to look at today as we look at this portion of the Word of God. But um, I entitled the message, Asking Jesus to Leave. Now, uh, I, I've been, I, I was in a home one time years ago trying to uh, witness to some folks and... Uh, Apparently, the man got a little bit offended because he felt like he was good enough and didn't need a Savior. And so, uh, in the process, uh, his wife had gone to get us some coffee, and as he, she came walking back in, uh, she, he said to her, you just go put that up because these men are getting ready to leave. And so, I was invited just to go ahead and get out of his house. And the reason is he didn't want to be confronted with the fact that he needed a Savior. And uh, so, uh, believe it or not, I've been kicked out of more houses than you would imagine. I mean, I really have been, uh, just because people don't want to hear things. But you know, think about Jesus. Of all people, why in the world would anybody say, Listen, Jesus, uh, uh, thanks but no thanks. We just want you to get on out of here and don't bother us and leave us alone. Uh, we actually find that. We actually find it. And so uh, we're going to read our text together. Let's stand up. Matthew chapter 8, beginning with verse number 28. The Bible says this, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, unheard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the her whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him... They besought him that he would depart out of their coast. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray, Lord, for your leadership and guidance today. I pray, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that the Word of God would be preached with sincerity, in truth, and with power. And I pray, Lord, that every one of us would have spirit-anointed ears that we might hear and receive and act upon what your Word says. And so now, Lord, just have your way and will in every heart and life. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. You know, uh, maybe, maybe you don't do this, but I find myself doing this sometimes as I read the Scripture. And I see certain things that have happened. And I'll ask myself the question, what in the world were they thinking? I mean, what in the world were they doing? I mean, I don't understand it. That, that, that is so clear to me what they should have done, and they just did the exact opposite of what, they, what was the wise and prudent thing to do. And yet, if we'll be honest, if we look at our own lives, and we look at the attitudes and the actions of so many that are around us, uh, you know, these folks aren't really a whole lot different than you and I. You know, uh, as we look at this, we could probably start asking a few questions and we could ask, first of all, you know, what would cause these folks to ask Jesus to leave <clears throat> their presence? What, what was it? What, what caused them to come to that point that they'd say, Jesus, listen, uh, appreciate you coming, 
uh, you know, appreciate what you're doing, but you know, you, we just all think we'd be better off if you just went somewhere else. What would cause them to do something like that? And you know, I, I think sometimes we got to just stop and look at this. In our own, <coughs> excuse me, in our own lives, are we sometimes guilty by our actions, by our attitudes to say, uh, Lord, Glad you're up there, but I got it. You stay out of my life. You leave. You leave me alone. I'll leave you alone, and uh, and, and I'll I'll take care of it. And if I get in a big enough trouble, then I'll holler for you. But until then, uh, you know, just let me do my thing. You say, "Oh, now, preacher, nobody would ever say that." Oh, we may not say it with our lips, but sometimes we do uh, say it with our attitudes. And with our actions. And uh, so I got to look into this thing and really began to pray over this thing. And, 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 and really saw a bit of a trend and I think th- that could apply to each and every one of us. Go back and look at verse 28 again. <coughs> it says, And when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear so that no man might pass by that way. You know... Uh, This is going to be a a rather harsh statement that some of you might question, uh, you know, whether or not I'm I'm on the right track here. But uh, hear me out before you uh, go too far. I believe sometimes we ask Jesus to leave when we just simply grow comfortable with satanic oppression. We're living in a world today, if you haven't figured it out yet, the devil is oppressing the world that we're living in. I mean, if you don't believe it, look at what's going on in politics. If you don't believe it, look at what's going on even in uh, some of the uh, uh, prime time uh, television that is being put out. I am shocked to see that some of the stuff that is being put out today as uh, as entertainment. You know, I was uh, several times over the last uh, uh, week. I stopped by to see Miss Lina Falk and. Uh, uh, when I walked in, Brother James O would normally be sitting in his recliner and he'd have his TV on. And uh, uh, one time I walked in <coughs> and he had on <clears throat> Big Valley. I remember y'all remember that show, okay? Another time I walked in, he had on Bonanza. And boy, I got real excited one day when I walked in. And it was just coming on. I always used to really look forward to the opening of this show. He had on the rifleman. (laughs) I mean, boy, there he was. And I'm saying, man, I like that guy. You know, you just don't find entertainment like that anymore. I mean, it's gotten crude, vulgar, profane. In many cases, flat out satanic. I mean, there's one show still running, the title of the show, and I don't watch it, by the way, but the title of the show is called Lucifer. Okay? Uh, I I don't know if you watch that, but if you do, you can get right with God at the close of the service. Uh, But, uh, you know, uh, the, the reality is, I mean, we're glorifying that which is totally contrary to everything that the Word of God teaches us. And, you know, this was a situation that had persisted for a long time. Now, if you go to the other uh, gospel accounts, you're you're going to find a little bit of a difference that has caused some people to want to question uh, the Word of God a little bit. But I believe there's always a good answer for things. And even when we don't come up with a perfect answer, you just learn to say, well, I may not understand it, but I'm going to trust God when I get to heaven. He'll explain it to me. All right. But, uh, uh, you know, in... in uh, Luke 8.27, where we find the same account, notice what it says in Luke 8.27. It says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. All right, so this was something that had been going on a long time. You say, wait a minute now, preacher, I see a little bit of a discrepancy. In Luke, it says there came out uh, to him a certain man. And here in the book of Matthew, it says there met him two possessed with devils. Why does it say one in one place and two in another place? And boy, I got to scratch in my head and said, you know, that's a very good question. 
So I began to go back and forth with some of the different commentators just to see what maybe they saw, what they uh, what they said. And you know, the majority says, well, you know, whenever you have a, a couple of individuals, there's always one that has the more pronounced uh, personality and is really the primary one and the focus on, on uh, some of the gospel writers was on this one that was particularly fierce in his opposition to Jesus. And therefore, that's why they just focused on him. And whereas Matthew just says, okay, there was two of them. But one of the things that I thought was sort of neat, I never even thought about this before. Matthew Henry, a long time ago writer, he said, you know, it's very possible this could have been a husband and wife. And they were just treated as one. I don't know if that's right or not. You say, preacher, what's the answer? I don't have a clue. But I'm going to trust God. Amen? Amen. Okay. Listen, it doesn't bother me one bit. I mean, the reality is there was a problem and there was a, a, a situation that had persisted for a long time. Listen, let me just get this in your mind. Satan's great design is to prejudice people against Jesus. Now, I, I, want, to, I want to get that in your mind. Against Jesus. You can talk about God all you want to, and that won't shake anybody up. But when you start specifying Jesus, buddy, there is a problem then. Right. I want to remind you, the Bible says that the devils believe in God and tremble. But buddy, they get nervous when Jesus is on the scene. Now you say, I thought Jesus is God. He is. But you see, we use God as a very generic thing. I remember after 9-11, one of the things, and, and by the way, I'm not, uh, I think in many ways he did a tremendous job trying to keep America safe uh, after 9-11. But, but our own president, George uh, Bush, came out and said, well, you got to understand, though, you know, the, the God of Islam is the same God as Christianity. Oh no, I'm sorry. George W. was right on a lot of stuff, but he was dead wrong on that issue. There is a big difference. Amen. Listen, you, you, it's not enough. And this bothers me sometimes. But a lot of people say, oh, they're alright. They believe in God. It's not enough. you got to believe in Jesus. He is the one. You see, Satan is the author of any and all religion that refuses to exalt Jesus as the only way to God. <coughs> you say, preacher, that's awful harsh. That's reality. Okay? First John chapter 5 <coughs> verse 11 says this, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Amen. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Listen, we need to understand, it's got to be specific. It's not just, well, you just believe in a hereafter. Everybody's going to have a hereafter. Just depends on your relationship with Jesus on what kind of hereafter you're going to have. Amen. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. He is the focal point. And here, the reason perhaps they said, Jesus, go ahead and leave. <coughs> this is a bad situation. But we're comfortable with it. We're used to it. It's our problem. Just go ahead and let us deal with it the way we've always dealt with it. Maybe that was the problem. Look at verse 29. Here it gets a little bit more interesting. It says, And behold, they cried out. This is the demons, by the way. Cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? What a statement. Here's the thought that went through my mind. We might be tempted to ask Jesus to leave when we are comfortable ignoring the future. I really believe sometimes folks say, don't, don't tell me about the future. I don't want to know about it. I'm only interested in right now. You know, 
That phrase in there that seems a little bit difficult for us in, in English to wrap our heads around it, when they started all saying, What have we to do with thee? What have we to do with thee? You know, basically, this was a phrase that if we put it into our modern vernacular, we might say something like this. We're not bothering you, so leave us alone. You know, one of the hardest things sometimes when I'm, when I'm trying to tell people about Jesus, and why, when you're trying to, t- and by the way, I hope you, if you know Christ as your Savior, I hope on a regular basis you are trying to share your faith with somebody else and tell them the importance of putting their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior. By the way, I'm a Baptist. I'm one by conviction, and, uh, and, and I wouldn't want to be anything else. But my job is not to try to convince people into becoming Baptists. My job is trying to point people toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the key. But whenever you're trying to share with someone about their need of knowing Christ as their Savior, do you know what the hardest part is sometimes? The hardest part is convincing them that they are lost and they need a Savior. Because they basically say, oh, I'm okay. Don't tell me about that future stuff. I don't want to hear about that. I'm comfortable right now. I'm doing okay right now. I mean, don't bother me with all those details. It's going to make me a little bit nervous. (coughs) I remember many years ago, went up knocking on a door down in Florida. And this lady came to the door. And I... I told her who I was, and I had another man with me. I says, you know, we talked for a second. I says, listen, uh, I, I just, we're here to talk to you about the Lord. I want to know if you know Jesus as your, as your Savior. She says, oh, you got to come in. We came in. This was an amazing thing. And she says, I've been reading this book. And she showed me a book on prophecy. I believe it was by Jack Van Impey. And she said, I am scared to death and I got to know for sure that everything's going to be okay for me. We led her to the Lord right there in the home. One of the easiest people I ever led to the Lord. You know why? Because, buddy, she had already been reading and she was under conviction. Hard part nowadays is people don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Say, hey, read this book on prophecy. Hey, what do I want to read that for? Because that's what's coming. Well, I don't want to know. I'd just rather not know about it. They said, hey, what have we to do with thee? We're not bothering you. Don't So just leave us alone. Go away. Listen, I believe the demons knew that judgment was coming. And you know what? We deceive ourselves when we ignore that reality. In 2 Peter chapter 2, notice what it says here, <clears throat> beginning with verse number 1. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Listen, these, these demons knew judgment was coming. And we want to ignore the reality of it. Listen, every one of us are going to face Jesus one day. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. <coughs> wow. Look at verses 30 to 33. Got to kick it into high gear. It says, And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their way into the city and told everything. And what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. Listen. We ask Jesus to leave sometimes when we're comfortable choosing commerce over conviction. You know, I I pray that every one of y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. 
as long as you're willing to give faithfully for the work of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I want you to have a great job. But you know what? When you get offered a new job, let me tell you what the first thing ought to be coming out of your mouth. Well, let me pray about it and find out if it's God's will. Because I'm going to tell you something. There are more important things than just a big paycheck. I haven't made, made comment of this often. I don't think. But when I left my church in Florida and came to Rents Baptist Church, I took a pay cut. You say, you did? Yeah. Now, y'all have taken care of me well over the years. I've got no complaints, okay? No complaints, but I took a pay cut. You say, well, why'd you do that? Because we prayed about it and we felt like it was the will of God. Amen. There are more important things than just a paycheck, Amen. You know, a herd of swine, think about it, a herd of swine should have never been commerce among the Israelites. Shouldn't have been there. And, and you know, the problem is, there's nothing wrong with making good money, but it all depends on our attitude toward the money that we make. In, in 1 Timothy, in chapter number 6, and verse number 9, it says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation, and a snare into, into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money itself, it's the love of money that's the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after they have erred from the faith, and pierced them themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. That herd of swine should have never been inside the borders of Israel. But there it was. Now Jesus permitted the demons to go to the swine and they of course ran down into the sea and perished. It's amazing to me that these pigs had more common sense than, uh, than these individuals. Those pigs got those demons in them that says, mm -mm, we're not sticking around here with these jokers. And off they went. Listen. Jesus, they said, let us go. And Jesus said, okay, I'll let you go. Let me just chase the rabbit here real quick. Jesus permitted them to do that. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus will permit you in your life to either do right or wrong. Don't misunderstand me. I believe in the sovereignty of God. But I do not believe that God handles us as a bunch of puppets. And we only do what He dictates that we must do. He knows what we will do. Has I got it all worked out? But He'll allow you to make a choice, either right or wrong. But then you've got to deal with the consequences. Look at verse 34. It says, And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. When they saw Him, they besought Him that He would depart out of their coast. You know, we ask Jesus to leave when we get comfortable with the status quo instead of the presence of Jesus. Many of us might even be willing to say, Jesus, what have I to do with Thee? I'm not bothering you. Leave me alone. We're living, we're living in the last age, I think, before Jesus comes back. Amen. I believe Jesus could come back at any moment. And right now we're living in the Laodicean age, a, a lukewarm age. And, and as a result, we find so much of this in organized religion. What we find in Isaiah 30, 9 and 10 says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, lie to us as long as it makes us feel good. Listen, Jesus, when Jesus is around, <coughs> He never leaves those that He encounters the way He found them. You know, uh, I hesitate to share this. But out of the blue, I, I did not plan to use this, but <coughs> Sandy told me the other night, I read it to her, and she says, you ought to make a copy of that. You may need it one day. And I got thinking about it. I said, you know, it sort of fits for today. I got, a, I got a message on Facebook from someone that I'm not even friends with. But I'm going to read you the message. Bless my soul. It says, Hi, Pastor Van. My name is Rick Mahon. 
And I visited your church in Shady Hills, Florida in 1983 with Bud Fry, who was my co-worker at U-Haul <coughs> Company. Back then, Bud shared the gospel with me, and I visited your church and trusted Christ as my Savior. You baptized me too at a church member swimming pool. I remember that location. I have been a member of First Baptist Church of Landa Lakes, Florida since 1984. I am now a volunteer missionary in Taiwan and have been there for 13 years. I have also been on many short-term mission trips all over the world. I would like to sincerely thank you for your dedication to serving the Lord and helping to change my life back then. I sent a friend request to Bud, but I'm not sure if he checks it that much. If you happen to be able to contact him, please let him know that I would love to get in touch with him and tell him about all that God has done in my life since he led me to the Lord back in 1983. Thank you so much, Pastor Van. God bless. Wow. Wow. I, I, I actually figured out how to copy and paste this. Okay, can you? Man, I, I'm, I'm really moving up. I copied, pasted it, and sent it to Bud's wife. And got a response right back and say, oh, that's so exciting. So exciting. Somebody really comes to meet Jesus. Their life is changed. They're never the same. Let me just say this and I'm closing. For real. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, Come to Jesus. He won't leave you the way you are. Well, I'm not saying you won't have struggles. But He'll change you. you never be the same. You know, how many times have we had the opportunity to enjoy the presence and power of Jesus, but we turned Him away because it might alter our plans or take us out of our comfort zone? If there's ever been a time that we really need the presence of Jesus... It's now. My goodness, let's don't be guilty of saying, Lord, <laughs> you leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. No. We need thee. Oh, we need thee. Every hour I need thee. That should be our attitude and our prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your word. Oh, dear God, may we desire your presence every moment of every day. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's what if I could tell you that I could share with you the best news imaginable? I'm sure that'd be a refreshing thought when we consider that normally what we hear on television and the radio today is nothing but bad news. What if I could share with you the fact that we could spend eternity in a perfect place where everything is joyful and there's no more sin or death or suffering? Of course, the Bible tells us that place is called heaven. Now, there are many religions that all have different ways to tell you how they perceive that you could get to heaven. Most religions say, do this, do that, do the other. And if you do enough of the good stuff, then you just might make it. I'm glad that there's a better way than what religion says. The Bible tells us that God loves us. In fact, in John 3:16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, the fact of the matter is we could never do enough on our own to be acceptable to God because we're sinners, we're fallen, and God knows that. And that's why Jesus came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood. But that's not the end of the story. When they put his body in the grave, three days and three nights later, the Bible says that he rose again. He conquered death. And today, he's seated at the right hand of the Father to be our Savior, to be our High Priest, to be the mediator between us and a holy and righteous God. Now for us to have the right relationship with Him, it's not that we have to do things to earn His favor. 
He's already done all that is necessary. He came, he died, he paid for our sins. The only thing that he requires is that we accept him as our savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then to be able to accept this great salvation, the Bible says very simply, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friend, salvation is as simple as us accepting by faith what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary and then calling out by faith to him and accepting that wonderful gift of salvation. The greatest decision you'll ever make is to trust Christ as Savior. And I'd like to encourage you to trust Christ today as your Savior. And then you can go to him in prayer and you can pray something like this and say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, but I know you died for me on the cross. And right now, right here, I accept you as my Savior. Please save me, and I thank you for your promise to do so. And you can pray that in Jesus' name, and you can have the best news ever that you've got a home waiting for you in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.